What's going on everyone? This is your boy Ash the Man and welcome to the video and here we are talking about Fire Force Season 2 Episode 4 Grope Through the Flames and before I go ahead and get started don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, hit the like button hit that notification button and don't feel don't be afraid to leave a comment what you guys think about the episode, video, and all that good jazz. So let's go ahead and definitely get started with this episode four. So we can honestly say this. This episode was lit. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I was like literally like just on the edge of the seat because this episode definitely you know was just crazy so if you're picking up for where episode episode three left off um we know that um Ica was identified as the um fifth pillar so so far we got old we got i want to say old girl who pretty much looked like iris but not iris is the fifth pillar the second pi pillar is uh shamara the third pillar is Shu on uh, show, which is uh, Shinra's little brother, Shinra being the fourth pillar, and Aika being the fifth. So that's all five pillars confirmed so far. So with this being said, um, the white coat is wanting to capture and have all pillars under their banner. So the fire force wanted to kind of like interrupt that and being able to reach the pillar before they do. Now as you could as you go on you can see that it could really just don't want to be really controlled she doesn't really want to save she just pretty much wants the thrill of life she is a very weird individual but let's take a second off of this let's talk about what is going on what's going on outside of their little area now the city is pretty much in a disarray like you know people are sent to infernos so the bugs been released by the white coat um unit eight is pretty much is just having um you know the worst time trying to be everywhere so they got reinforcements they got sisters they have more sisters like iris they have more people and things is looking up a little bit but still they can't cover every part of the city so with that being said they have to put some plans of motions so with them having reinforcements try to get as much inferior um <laughs> infernos down and then demon inferno that did make its presence um they're gonna have to tackle that down and which you know it, it pretty much just made it appearance we haven't even seen it you know kind of like attack so that's going to be something that's going to be interesting that we're going to see in episode five now with this being said um they were able to locate shamira because in this operation she is kind of like the brains on the um white coat size she is giving them orders she is letting them know what they need to do she is pretty much making sure that the plan going sufficient so they send arthur because they got her location to kind of like you know take her out so hopefully that can be the case now let's focus our attentions back on Shinra and Ika and you know the white coat, you know, black dude, because he is giving Shinra a run for his money. Now, literally, um, Shinra has been stepping it up, but my man is just way too strong. I mean, like he's a whole beast in itself. So in this case, um, he is trying to capture both of them, both pillars, so that they the white coat can definitely keep their advantage. Now he end up having his boys um, grab um, Ika, so they taking her away, and they almost captured her until reinforcements happened. But as soon as they helped them out, Shir um, Shiver try to go to the location of Ika, but unfortunately, he's not able to do that in one piece because the um, you know the the um, black guy is literally is just all over Shiver's head, <laughs> making him just looking like lunch meat. Now, in the, in the times of their interaction, this is very interesting, that Shira and Ika interaction with each other is not a very good one because her thing is, is that like, she goes about life in a thrill. She doesn't go with the concern of others, um, you know, being a hero or anything like that. Her thing is about sort of like the life of the moment because she, again, she was the fire thief. Like if a fire started, she raced to the scene, give him a bribe, like, hey, look, I save you, but you know, where's your valuables at? That's the kind of person she is. And she does it not just only for the money, but just for the thrill of it. Like, you know, being in that kind of situation, knowing that her fears is getting most of her, she enjoys that. You got to see that flashback in episode four where when she started predicting the fires and seeing people turn to fire, she started smiling. She has so much enjoyment, so much excitement going on. Heck, well, even when her friend died, when she in this episode, when she had that like little flashback of him dying, 
she she made a grin because it it, it it pretty much catered to her fear and which gave her excitement so honestly if you ask me i think it is going to be leaning more towards the white coat i don't even think she's even going to consider the um fire you know the fire soldiers the only reason because of that she said their purpose their righteousness is born to her and she doesn't get no excitement what uh, from it whatsoever so um you know take it with a grain of salt you know she is going to be part of the white coat either we like it or not and honestly it fits her role it fits her character so with that being said um it makes his fight you know seem like it's going to be pointless because in all in their operations the main thing that they trying to go for is going to be a failure in the end so that's what we could go about but overall uh, the episode pretty much you know leaves off with pretty much with them you know trying to get everything under control with um with them trying to save the city with sure we're trying to get it cut over to the fire force side which again is going to be a failure for ask me um it's just a lot of things going on and let's not forget uh to make up with her you know trying to be a sister uh slip falls and she ended up nude again Gotta love the fan service, but to me, it just it had really no purpose here. But it was still funny that they kind of like threw that into this episode. So definitely funny, y'all do it, y'all job. So how do we how do we consider this episode to be? I think graphic wise, we can all agree that Fire Force it has no problem of doing really good when it comes to graphics. Um, sound quality due to the action being out and there's sometimes when they hit to talking and everything was good um, I think the main objective of the episode knowing that the operations going on different things going on I think they really hit it well with that so we didn't lose no type of um, creativity as far as like story wise action wise it was able to blend together to where we got a really good intense episode so overall I, I really like this episode it really stands out um with the episodes that we have so far so that's definitely a good thing you, you definitely want to have something like this this strong early because it could just really determine that you know even though that we probably don't get like really much conclusive like information right now it's something to really look forward to later with them being able to go strong without everything being revealed so that's a good thing definitely a thumbs up on that but other than that thank you guys for definitely tuning in definitely appreciate you guys stopping by don't forget Get to subscribe uh, hit that like hit that follow hit that um, notification button and don't forget to leave a comment below what you guys thought about the episode i definitely will reply we chatted up and everything so with that being said you guys take it easy and have a nice one